So uh, my question was, well, actually, I, I, I'm wondering if Brother Hamza is online. Yeah, he is. He is there. Yeah. Yes, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, but on the last stream, this is a follow-up from my last stream. So on the last stream, I well, in very short, I asked you about why some du'as don't get accepted, and you told me that we need to have faith on online. Maybe I'm missing a suffer in my life. So, which is true. Now, the follow-up thing is that. Uh, I am more specifically talking about a person who is suffering, who has been suffering from depression for a long time. Now, the person has had a very long life, had gone through many different challenges. And now the last one is about their marriage. So but the person has been praying for a long time and yet uh, he or she has not been able to get married successfully. Now, but the person is very depressed about this. Uh, the person tells me that uh, they are not but they feel that life is stagnant and so on. Now the problem is severe, there's no doubt, maybe I cannot explain the severity of the problem in this short time. Um, the thing is that the person keeps praying all the time and the person tells me that she, when, or he, when, when he thinks that whether this is going to work, he thinks that it's, it has no guarantee whether, it's, whether the dua is going to be accepted, right? And this makes him feel disheartened that I'm praying so much, I'm in so much pain. Maybe if I had cried in front of 1,000 people asking or begging for something, the 1,000 people, at least one of them might have responded. Now, Allah has infinite mercy. So why doesn't Allah respond to my cry of pain? I've been crying for so long. How can something good be hidden in so much pain or tension for me? Right? And if uh, getting married in this case is what the person wants. So if that thing is bad for, for him or her, then what is the significance of making dua? So what can you tell me to help this person who has been so much trouble, uh, who has been in depression and actually has been suicidal for some time? Can I try to approach this one? Yes, yes please. Go ahead and uh, keep your answer brief. Inshallah. Yeah. So a blessing doesn't necessarily have to show itself immediately. So like, for example, there was a lot of crap that was going on in my life when I was younger. And I, for the life of me, for many, many years, couldn't see the, the point of it or the, the benefit of that. Um, and, you know, the, the sort of demanding the benefit to show itself immediately is, is more um, expressive of a, a lack of patience than anything. Because um, they can, the, the, the blessings themselves can show themselves a decade, two decades down the line. And it's only in hindsight, much later on in life, that you might see the benefit of that. Um, so that, that would be one thing. The second thing, um, so there's the, the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is Allah doesn't test anyone with um, any sort of pain, suffering, illness, or even the, the prick of a thorn. Um, but that he doesn't uh, forgive your sins by it. And so this can be a method of uh, achieving forgiveness. And so people might be going through um, X amount of suffering, whatever that might be. They might not necessarily see the reward for that in this life. They may be given it in the next life. And what um, is required of them here is simply patience. So, the, you know, not only, so sometimes you've got diff three different ways of this blessing um, showing itself, either immediately, either later on in life, or in the hereafter. And it could be any one of those. Allah isn't, um, it, you know, it's, it's not necessary for him to have to give it to you immediately. He can give it to you however he sees as, um, as best. And many people... Uh, might very well demand that blessing now, um, but in the hereafter, be thankful that it was given to them later. Um, so that would that would be my answer to it. Yeah, that's a brilliant answer, Brother Zakla. I would add to it as well that um, one would need to be grateful because sometimes when we're, we're wanting something, uh, it's like a test and we forget to be grateful. And gratitude is something where Allah says, if you're grateful, Allah will give you more. Some ulama say you be, he'll give you more things to be grateful about, right? Or he'll give you more. So one, it sounds like this person is not focusing on things that they already have. Is not focusing on the things that you know that they should be grateful for, like the the fact that they're Muslim, the fact that they exist. That's one thing to add. Another thing to add is this: only Allah knows what's good for you. At the end of the day, and I said this previously, I'm just repeating the same answer. Whatever Allah chooses for you, you couldn't choose any better. But what's significant here is, well, you said she prays and, you know, nothing happens. Well, why does she pray? Now, 
if you meant prayer other than dua, you mean the, the, the five prayers, you should not pray just to get something. We pray. No, no, because, I mean, make dua. Prayer is yeah, there. Well, dua is an act of worship too. But, and this is a wider point I want to address. Some people in some of our communities, we have a transactional understanding of worship. Don't get me wrong, we should have a level of transaction. Allah talks about this. But we have it in a what I would call a hidden shirki way. Let me explain. We believe we're equal business partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. If I pray, Allah should give me something. Allah is worthy, has... of, worship. Yeah. Sorry, Allah sorry, is worthy sorry. of worship by virtue of who he is and not necessarily um, only because he's giving us stuff. And we have to really align our worship towards that, which is extremely important. But let's just make an announcement. We just noticed 10 a.m. Chowdhury. May Allah bless him. Allahu Akbar. He has donated 1,000 pounds. Allahu Akbar. Allah. Wa ta'ala grant him, Allah. his loved Allah. ones and his family, the best in this life and the best in the life to come. Ameen. 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 May Allah open the doors of Jannah. I thought that was 100 pounds, actually. I thought I have donated. Okay, donated. Uh, someone, has, someone else has donated. Allah, 100 pounds. Allahu Akbar. These are, you see people are waking up. All the lions are waking up, possibly for uh, suhoor, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, uh, I just wanted to uh, add to wait, the... wait, 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 wait. Before you, uh, yeah, so brother, so you can. I yeah. want, I want someone else to match that donation, a, a thousand pounds. Yeah, I want, I want someone else. I want absolutely. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Allah wa Quran, Allah wa Quran. Now people are waking up. You see, brother, yeah. sisters, I want you all to understand this opportunity doesn't come every day. I want someone out there to match that thousand pounds, even if it's ten people. Even if it's 10 people, let's aim to get 10 people to make a donation of 100 pounds each so that we can make Brother Tanim's reward double because he has made a donation and he's potentially encouraging a lot other people to come forward and do, do the same. And let's double his reward. Let's pay him back handsomely. Let's double the reward for Brother Tanim. May Allah bless him. May Allah accept from him. Okay, I mean, so I mean, let's I mean, wake I mean. up. Brother Sabur, go yeah. ahead very quickly, inshallah. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that... Um... I want to correlate this uh, with this with something that I, I actually heard from uh, a sister called Gulbahar Jalilov. Gulbahar Jalilov is a uh, Uyghur sister from um, uh, Kazakhstan who was um, imprisoned in the concentration camps in China. And you know, she said that there was young girls who were 14, 15 who used to regularly be snatched away from the cells and be raped. And some of them actually died. And, uh, you know, she said that she used to cry when she used to see these women And uh, some of these women as they were being taken away And these are 14, 15 year old Uyghur girls They said, oh, sister, or you know, in because in, obviously she's a lot older than them She's in her 50s Why are you crying? We're going to Allah Like sometimes what we have to do is we have to realize Yes, this life, you go through immense pain and trauma you know, some people, I mean, I've interviewed people whose children are missing. Now, I have children. Adnan has children. Yusuf has children. Hamza has children. You, you know, if your Adnan uh, goes to Africa for like two, three weeks at a time, comes back, and I'm sure he misses his kids. Yeah. But imagine you haven't seen your kids for years and years and years. The fact is, this life is extremely painful. And, you know, you don't choose your struggles. And uh, we just have to come to terms that it's not the case where Allah will answer every single dua in the way that we want. We will find out the wisdom in the hereafter, but we really have to understand this because many, many people, and it's not just uh, the thing that you raised, brother, but many, many people out there in the world, they have this assumption that since Allah didn't answer my dua, Allah is not happy with me or Allah should have answered my dua. But you know, subhanAllah, we just have to think of it this way. Allah is our... Lord, we are Allah's slaves. Look, but we sometimes is, act as if we are the Lord. And Allah no, no, should be there, is, there is a hadith where Allah, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Prophet said, Allah thinks, uh, Allah is to a slave what he thinks of him. Hmm. Allah is to a slave. If you think Allah is oppressive towards you, Allah is not listening to you, then this is the way it might be. Okay? If you want Allah to be kind to you, if you want Allah to have mercy upon you, then think of Allah as the most merciful and always have your hopes high. Don't lose your hopes with Allah. 
because that's the biggest trap of shaitan. So on that note, we will move forward very quickly. Brother Yusuf's question, I'm pretty sure, has been asked. One last thing, please. One last thing, please. Very quickly, very quickly, very quickly. Yeah, yeah, very quickly. So so this thing, what you said makes sense to me. Now, that the person whom I asked for is watching the stream. So what will you say for that person so that she gets some, or he gets some peace and uh, but he doesn't lose hope? What, what will you say for him? Some words Share the that. losing hope in the mercy. Uh, sorry, Yusuf. No, go on, go on. Losing hope in the mercy of Allah is haram. Yeah, when we think of haram, we think of alcohol, we think of pork, we think of these things. But thinking that Allah is not going to have mercy on you, or thinking negatively of Allah, or despairing of Allah's mercy, is a huge, major sin. Because what you're doing is you're basically uh, it's a it, it is not. Like, we shouldn't think of it as a, a light thing just because you can't physically see it. It's haram to despair of Allah's mercy. And what you got to do is, even if the day of judgment's coming and you have a seed ling in your hand, you plant it. And what does that show you? Islam is fundamentally a religion of hope. Yeah? So you just have to have hope. And I'm sure Adnan can elaborate on this point. And you I think uh, this, this point has been elaborated upon already by Hamza, by yourself. And Brother Yusuf, thank you so much. For asking your question and we will try to move on to the next question inshallah thank, thank you very much can, can, can you guys okay can you guys please please make prayer for that person i request you very much please yeah. make everyone prayer in for the that chat. person so everyone viewing now make dua for that person inshallah. so not just us. everyone viewing please make dua for the person may allah guide this person to make it easy for them to inshallah make it easy for them i mean i mean i mean so I mean, thank you so thank, much thank you very much before moving on to the next person i want to remind everyone again we just had Brother Tanim donate a thousand pounds. We want to match that. Remember, okay, there's a hadith now. Prophet said, nothing afflicts a Muslim of hardship, nor illness, or nor anxiety, nor sorrow, nor, uh, nor harm, nor distress, nor even the pricking of a thorn, but that Allah will expiate his sins by it. Allahu Akbar. What a philosophy. And, and, and you know what's what beautiful? Philosophy that about one of the most beautiful hadith is that when someone. Who, who who suffered the whole the most in this dunya they will be dipped in paradise for a split moment and they'll be asked did you ever suffer and they will say by allah, allah. i've never suffered allah. this is such a beautiful hadith because at the end allah. of the day those people who are destined for paradise no matter how much suffering you've had the minute you're dipped in a split moment it's as if you've never suffered at all Allah. and what a beautiful you know philosophy that uh, any hardship that comes your way, it is actually a blessing in disguise because it's removing your sins. It's getting you closer to Allah. If this is the way you think about it, so we need to start thinking in that positive way. We ask Allah for protection. We ask Allah for afia. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from I mean, his I mean, I mean. and his trials. Okay. But if they do come your way, be patient and trust in Allah's judgment and his wisdom. So on that note, brothers and sisters, trust in Allah's judgment and wisdom. Let that money go. Let it go to a cause. And the Prophet ﷺ, once he came home and he asked Aisha, what is there to eat? Aisha said, we have given away some and we have kept some for ourselves. Are you listening, everyone? Aisha said, we have given away some and we have kept some for ourselves. The Prophet ﷺ said, what we have given away is truly ours. And what we have kept is simply, uh, you know, food to be used, basically. Oh. Right? So the philosophy of Islam is what you give away in the path of Allah is truly yours because that reward is eternal. That reward is not going anywhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he pays back handsomely. You trust in Allah and you put your belief in Allah and have confidence. Give it away in the path of Allah. You will see how it returns. You will see how it, Allah returns it handsomely. So this is why I, I advise everyone on a separate note, okay, apart from this appeal, apart from this appeal, do as much sadaqah as you can. Do as, as much sadaqah. If an opportunity for sadaqah, sadaqah comes your way, just do it. And see how Allah opens the doors of provisions for you. Just trust it. Just try it and see what happens. Okay, apart from this appeal. So, with this appeal, you know, Wallahi, you are planting seeds of Iman. Sapiensinstitute.org forward slash donate live okay, is the link. And this organization is doing what the Prophet ﷺ taught us to do. Answer questions about Islam. Don't sit idle. If Islam is attacked, respond. 
respond okay for example when the prophet ﷺ was in the most difficult of situation the most difficult of circumstances after the battle of Uhud, they were in a cave on top of a mountain and the Qurayshis from below the mountain they were taunting the prophet ﷺ. they were saying all sorts of things but when they said something about allah when they said something about the deen the prophet said respond to them the prophet said to umar respond to them when abu sufyan said you have lost so many we have lost so many the prophet told umar tell him your okay uh, sorry abu sufyan when he said that a day for your god and a day for our god hubal okay so the prophet ﷺ responded okay that our god is true god allah is worthy of worship and you are worshiping idols okay something something to that effect the point is the prophet sallallahu did not sit and just hear things and not respond to them sapiens institute is responding in legal intelligent intellectual ways to all the islamophobia that's coming our way and we will continue to work it will grow you can be part of that inshallah by supporting this work sapiensinstitute.org forward slash donate live is the link we are right now live on a number of different channels by the way it's, this is a coordinated effort this is a joint effort from a number of different people you know you, if you knew how many du'at and people are involved in this work you would subhanallah would be surprised and you would happily support okay we cannot bring everyone together unfortunately in one live stream so we will we will continue to do we will bring more people inshallah so that you can see the kind of support we have alhamdulillah intellectually spiritually and people are making du'as for us you can come forward and meet the challenge 